Hello, John Talley here with PartZilla.com. Today I'm going to show you how to rebuild the primary sheave on our 2007 Yamaha Grizzly YFM 700. Not that tough to do, just need to get a couple of panels and that cover out of the way. We'll go to the tool table, talk about the tools and the parts we're going to need, and then we'll dive into it. So let's go. Welcome to the tool bench. This is going to be a skill level two, but don't let it scare you off. Let's go over some of the tools you're going to need to do this. As always, a good 3 8 ratchet, a couple of extension, a good torque wrench, a 10 and a 12 wrench, and then on the socket side, just a 10 millimeter and a 22 millimeter. You also want to pick up a four millimeter Allen. On the special tool side, you're going to need a couple of six millimeter bolts. Beyond that, you're going to need two different types of clutch holders. They got a basket type holder, and then an outer holder. So you're going to need both of those to pull those off. Now, if you would, reference our exploded parts diagrams. That's going to give you a very clear picture of how this is going to come apart, and more importantly, how it's going to go back together. So once you have your tools and your parts, we can go over to the machine and I can walk you through it. Not much to it to start with, guys. Just need to get this foot well out of the way. So it's just four millimeter Allen and a 10 millimeter wrench will do it. Yeah, looks like this is looking a little rough. It's got a couple of cracks in it. So I think I'm going to get another one of these ordered. Next, I want to remove this upper panel so I can access the bolts that are holding on the top of the cover. All right, let's remove all these 10 millimeter bolts. To get the cover off more easily, I'm going to actually loosen up this brake cable so we'll have enough travel to go down and get that cover off. That should do. There we go. What I'm looking for here is the actual surface on the primary sheave up front. I don't want to see any, any grooves in it. And the belt, I want it to have a nice dull look. It's, it, I don't want it to be shiny because if it's shiny, that means it's been slipping. Some of the things that you want to be looking for that would have caused you to come in here is you go to accelerate and the unit's real jerky or it just really doesn't engage very quickly. That's usually an indicator that you've got a problem with either your primary or your secondary sheaves. Now we're going to go a little bit further. We're going to go ahead and pull off this bearing carrier. All right, let's go ahead and loosen up the uh, secondary sheave just to make it easier to deal with. And you do that with just a couple of extra 10 millimeter bolts with a six millimeter thread. I want to make sure they're fairly long. When we run those in, it's going to open the sheave up. Now what we're about to do here in a second is take off this large bolt at the end of the primary sheave. And when we do that, it's actually just going to pull off and you'll see an inner bearing and then the inner part of the sheave as well. All right, and this is a 22 millimeter. Now, just the outer bolt washer. Now this whole assembly will come off. This is the part we're concerned with. This, we'll just leave it in place. All right, looking at the sheath surface, it's actually in good shape on the inner. The outer has a little bit of wear. You can see it, but I cannot feel it, so it's good to go. So what we're going to do is take this over to the teardown bench, inspect our hub and those sliders that it rides on, Replace those if necessary, re-grease it, and put it back together. All right, you'll notice I've got an impact with a uh, Phillips in it with a hammer because I have found sometimes these can be a little tough to pop loose. This one doesn't seem to be that bad, but honestly, with an impact, isn't that so much simpler? What happens, especially if you sink one of these and you get water and mud inside of this enclosure, well, it doesn't play well with the other moving parts. It'll try to lurch forward or either doesn't want to engage at all. Chances are you need to open this up and take a peek inside because it's probably going to be sludge in there. I have opened them up before where it was like clay. I mean, it took a lot of centrifugal force to actually break those weights loose. And that doesn't make for very smooth acceleration. All right, when you remove this outer section, there should be an O-ring that you have to kind of fight it past. But keep in mind that this metal isn't super thick and you don't want to damage it prying it off. Just walking it around. There we go. There we 
There's that O-ring I was talking about. And all that grease that it's been packed with. Like I said, this one's not in that bad of shape. That's about the consistency you're looking for. But we're in here, we're gonna go ahead and take it all the way apart. We're gonna clean it up. I'm probably gonna replace most of the moving parts inside. So, let's go ahead and lift out that center section. See the sliders all the way around. And then down inside this cavity, you've got eight weights. They make different weights depending on how you want the sheave to engage. Now I reordered a set, but I just went back to the factory. But if you're looking for a little bit of change in your acceleration curve, that's when you start changing up your weights. All right, with all that removed, we're gonna go over to the parts washer, get these cleaned up, and take a close look at them. Very important that you get these really cleaned up well because the last thing we want is any of that grease in the cleaning solution that I was using to get over on the belt side. Now, I'll be reusing the inner and outer sheaves. If one or both of them were worn, you'd want to replace them as a set. Before you put it together, you'd want to get a scotch right pad and just rough up the surface just a little bit. We just want to knock off the, any type of smoothness so it'll bite into that new belt. But like I said, this one looks good. Usually, if it's really worn out where these sliders are riding, you'll see grooves and these outer protrusions that come out. This one's in good shape. The grease that you want to use for this, Yamalube makes it, and it's actually called Ultramatic Grease. And in the manual, they say to put 90 grams on each one of the weights. But the way I do it is to put maybe an eighth to a quarter inch of grease on the weight itself around the outer surface. And that's always worked for me before. And just drop them in. They do not care which direction you put them in. All right, next let's coat down the surface where the sliders are gonna ride. There's only four of those. And since we're still making a mess, let's go on the inside of the sheave itself. Now, let's take the sliders, install them on the cam, and we want the red side facing up. And let's go ahead and put a little directly onto the sliders. With all that together, let's go ahead and put our cam in place. Let's get our O-ring, and it just goes to that first little edge, right there. Just to make sure it makes it over, put a light coat just to the inside edge of the stopper. Now let's push her back down. Make sure we didn't pinch that o-ring anywhere and we're good. And that o-ring isn't trying to keep dirt out, it's trying to keep grease in. Because when this thing's flying around at the RPMs it's going to be turning, it would actually force grease out that edge and then make a big mess. Not that I've ever seen that happen before. All right, let's get all of our Phillips back in. All right, guys, let's go over, and then put it back together. All right, and that's definitely where it's supposed to be because if it's sit in there flush, a little bit of the splines should be protruding out, maybe an eighth of an inch, and that's what we have. Now, we can take that washer I was talking about and then put on our outer bolt. All right, at this point, we're gonna get a holder to hold the primary and we're gonna take it to 100 foot-pounds. To have any chance of holding this still, I went up on top of the outer section of the primary sheave and now I'm just using a pry bar just to hold this still so I can put the 100 pounds on it. There it is. Now, let's get this out of the way, get the belt on. Now we're doing this, we want to make sure our arrows are going to the front, and they are. Bring it in, just walk it over. Now, let's release those two tension bolts. There we go. All right, that's as far out as she wants to go. Let's get a little grease 
on the end of this shaft and then into the uh, inside of the bearing carrier. Then we're going to get it bolted in place. There are two dowels that are across from each other. There's one to the top right and bottom left. Make sure those are still either A in the carrier or on the machine itself. And there are two different bolt lengths. So the long ones go here and here. These two are the short ones. What's our magic torque number? Seven. Make sure our seal's still in there. It is. I don't see any cracks in it, so I think we're good to go there. All of these bolts are the same length. All right, cover's in place. Let's go ahead and get the, uh, the rear brake adjusted back where it needs to be. And then we're down to just some plastics. I went ahead and ordered a new footwell for it. If you get a little bit confused, just reference back to our diagrams. I'm just going to show you exactly how to get it back together and what goes where. All right, guys, so we've got all the plastics back in place. The only thing I need to do is refill the oil. We actually have a video on doing an oil change service on this machine. So if you need a little help, why don't you go reference that one? Well, all right, guys, that wraps this project up. Well, listen, if you need any parts for your machine, why don't you come see us at partzilla.com and we can get you taken care of. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the section below and I'll do my best to answer them. If you like what you see and want to see what I'm going to be doing next, why don't you hit that subscribe button. Listen, we just want to say thank you for shopping here with us at Partzilla and we will see you in the next video. Have a great day.